Over the past few months, I've modified numerous Game Boy Color consoles, each with backlit TFT displays which produced great results. However, they all shared one flaw, which was the smaller overall size of the LCD display compared to the original Game Boy Color screen. We now have an option that retains the original screen size as well as utilizes IPS technology. When this display is coupled with an all-aluminum shell, something magical happens. So sit back, relax, and join me as we build the ultimate Game Boy Color console. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to another episode of Retro Renew. In today's Ultimate Build episode, we'll be building what I consider to be the perfect Game Boy Color. If you've been watching this channel for a while now, you know that I've actually modified quite a few Game Boy Colors. All of them featured a backlit screen, but they all had one major flaw. And that flaw is that all the screen sizes have been reduced from the original size of the Game Boy Color. Now there's a new kit which really isn't all that new, but it's an IPS panel from Funny Playing that now features a full-size backlit screen, which is awesome. And with that is a boxy pixel aluminum shell that can fit that IPS panel perfectly. So as with all my previous videos, I'm going to go over all the components you'll need in order to accomplish this build. So this is a fairly extensive build. We're gonna be modifying a lot of the components of the original Game Boy Color, but uh, I'm gonna start off by going over all the pieces you'll need so you can follow along. So the first item I'm gonna go over is the Boxy Pixel Aluminum Shell. Now this particular shell is anodized gray, and which is a, a newer color that he offered. Prior to this, he pretty much only had one anodized color and that was just clear, which is essentially a metallic color, but now he has uh, an assortment of colors, this one being one of them, and I think it looks fantastic. So this is a Revision F shell and it is very refined. The anodization that Boxy Pixel now does is perfect. It looks so professional. So I have to give kudos to Boxy Pixel because he's been here for a while now and he continues to improve his products every single time. And I'm just always floored by the amount of quality and attention to detail that he puts into each of these shells. So that's the Boxy Pixel aluminum shell we'll be using for this build. And of course, as with all boxy pixel shells, they come with these M2 machine screws that will be replacing all the original screws from the Game Boy Color, which is fantastic because these are all the same size and these are the only screws you will be using for this build. This next item is actually the first time I've actually purchased these. These are solid brass buttons. And my gosh, these things weigh a ton and the build quality is immaculate. And you can notice here on the D-pad that there is a little cutoff there and that's to accommodate the IPS screen because as you know the IPS panel is significantly larger than the original panel and there is some space needed and this cutoff here helps make that fitment just perfect. So those are the brass buttons that we'll be using for this build. So next is a 2000 milliamp hour uh, battery that BoxyPixel uh, actually provides on his website. But if you don't wanna go through him, you can actually source this on your own. You just need to make sure it is 3.7 volts. It has a protection uh, circuit integrated and that it doesn't exceed the dimensions uh, that are specified on his website. And I'll also list the dimensions you need uh, down here somewhere. So that is the internal battery that we'll be using for this build. So the next item here is the USB type C uh, recharging PCB. So I think this is really great that this is USB type C and I think it's really going to be awesome to integrate this into the Game Boy Color build. Great, so the next item you'll need is this uh, custom 3D printed bracket which actually holds the charging PCB. So it kind of goes in there uh, like so. It holds it in place and it's also a holder for uh, the battery so it keeps the battery in place as well so it's kind of dual purposed in that sense and Again, you can get this from the BoxyPixel website, or if you have your own 3D printer, I believe BoxyPixel provides the STL files, so you can print your own. But yeah, so this is the uh, custom 3D printed bracket to hold the charging PCB. And the next item you'll need is the uh, screen lens. Now, the really great thing about this build is we're actually gonna be using the IPS kit, which utilizes the full screen real estate. So there is no loss in size. The image is gonna be the same exact size as the original Game Boy Color screen. 
And so you can just use a standard screen lens. All right, so that's the screen lens. And now I'm gonna go over the IPS kit. And really there's two major components. So obviously this is the IPS panel that comes with a kit. And again, this is very similar to the ones provided on the Game Boy Advance kits, uh, as well as the Game Boy Advance SP. And now probably the most important part of the kit is the custom ribbon cable. And again, this is where all the magic happens. This custom ribbon cable is what converts the signal of the Game Boy Color so that it is readable on the IPS LCD panel. So in order to complete this build, you're gonna need the following items. Please feel free to pause the screen so you can take note of them. All right, with that out of the way, let's get started. All right, to get started, as always, grab your Game Boy Color and go ahead and grab your tri-wing bit and remove the six tri-wing screws in the back of the console. And once we have the shell open, we're going to remove the three Phillips screws securing the motherboard to the front shell housing. Next, we're going to delatch the ribbon cable from the motherboard. After this, we can remove the motherboard from the Game Boy console. We can now set the front shell housing aside. Now remove the four Phillips screws securing the RF shield to the rear shell housing because we'll be reusing this on the boxy pixel shell. And then on the front shell housing, be sure to grab the membranes because again, we'll be reusing these on the boxy pixel shell. And don't forget the power switch as well as the IR window. Grab your PCB holder as we'll use this to assist us in removing the battery terminals. So heat up the battery terminal solder pads and remove them with some pliers. And it should look like this. And while we're here, let's clean the button contacts with some isopropyl alcohol. Now trim the cartridge pins so that they are flush with the motherboard, ensuring that we won't have any shorts. And then we're also going to trim the two flanges on either side of the link port. Cut two pieces of wire at about four inches in length each. Then solder the black wire to the negative battery terminal and the red wire to the positive battery terminal. Now we're gonna prepare the funny playing LCD by attaching it to the ribbon cable. And then what we're gonna do is this kit actually came with a insulating sticker that we can stick on the back of the LCD to prevent any shorts. So go ahead and apply that. Once that's applied, adhere the ribbon cable to the rear of the LCD to hold it in place for the rest of the install. Peel the protective film off the funny playing LCD so that we can place it inside the boxy pixel front shell housing. and reuse to protect the film on the LCD so we can protect it for the remainder of the install. Now let's install the brass buttons, making sure that the flat end of the D-pad is closest to the funny playing LCD. With those installed, go ahead and install the membranes. After that, we can install the motherboard into the front shell housing making sure we connect the LCD ribbon cable to the motherboard. Next, we're gonna prep the charging PCB by inserting it into the 3D printed bracket and using some Kapton tape to hold it in place while we install it into the front shell housing. 
place the 3D printed bracket onto the Game Boy Color motherboard and secure it in place with two of the provided Phillips screws. Pre-tin the solder pads on the charging PCB. Solder the negative wire to the corresponding negative pad on the charging PCB, and then do the same with the positive wire. Now we're going to solder the negative battery wire to the negative battery pad on the charging PCB, and then do the same with the positive battery wire. Alright, once that's done, let's give it a quick test. Alright, everything seems to be working. Now we're going to go ahead and tuck the wires in and place the battery in its place. And while we're here, be sure to install the power switch. Now we're going to install the LCD brightness touch sensor. Pre-tin the small pad on the LCD ribbon cable. And then solder the sensor in place. Peel the sticker off the sensor so you can adhere it to the IR window. Once the sensor is in place, install the IR window into the front shell housing. I use some Kapton tape to cover the sensor pad just because this is an all-metal shell and we don't want any shorts. Now we're going to install the RF shield into the rear shell housing using four of the provided Phillips screws. Once completed, go ahead and place the rear shell housing onto the front and then secure it in place using the four Phillips screws. All right, once that's done, give it a quick test again. And here we're testing the dimming touch sensor and it seems to be working well. Now let's install the screen lens. Before installation, make sure there isn't dust on the LCD. And of course, for the best part of all, And there you have it. All right, wow, um, there's actually a lot that I do wanna talk about this mod, and I think it came out really well. So we have it here, and I think the results are simply fantastic. And I do wanna go over, uh, first and foremost, the pros and cons, and then at the end of the video, be sure you stay uh, till the end, because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually show you a side-by-side -side comparison to uh, a different backlighting solution. Uh, in this case, it'll be the Freckle Shack, but really it's gonna be very similar to a lot of the other backlight kits that are on the market that typically utilize a TFT display. Uh, so that's the Freckle Shack, the McWill kit, and the Midwest Embedded, and then some of the other uh, clones that are out there on the market. The, the differences are pretty substantial. Uh, but first again, like I said, I'm gonna go over the pros and the cons. And of course, starting with the pros, and there are a lot of them. The first thing you'll notice, you know, when you pick it up, it, it's the shell. And I have to say, I've purchased quite a few boxy pixel shells, and with each one, each revision, they get better and better. And and not only that, also the uh, the anodized finish gets better and better. Now the next pro are these buttons. Now these are the brass ones, and it just feels, I mean, just a little bit better than the aluminum ones, but. When you compare them to the standard OEM Game Boy Color buttons, and it's just night and day. I, it's maybe just my preference, but the way these buttons press with the metallic D-pad, the metallic A and B button, it just feels really, really nice to press. So again, the second pro I have to say are these brass buttons. Now, now the next pro is, you know, it's just basically uh, the same with all boxy pixel shells is the fact that this has an internal battery, it is rechargeable, and it utilizes a USB Type-C interface to charge it, which just really gives it a really modern polish, and it just really brings it to you know the year 2020. That's another really great pro of this kit. And and really the last pro of this kit really doesn't have anything to do with boxy pixel, but it is of course the display. That's what really brings this whole thing together is that IPS display 
from Funny Playing. Now, the one I bought actually wasn't a Funny Playing kit, but it is exactly the same. The same ribbon cable, the same display, and it works with this uh, boxy pixel shell. So now let's talk about the cons. And really, there's there's only one con, and, and that's the price. This is a, a very expensive build. This is an expensive modification for the Game Boy Color. But for what you're getting, I do think it is a fair price. So yeah, that's really about it. Uh, other than the price, I mean, there's just so much to love about this kit. I, I just think this is the perfect package for the Game Boy Color. So with everything that I purchased uh, from BoxyPixel, so that's the buttons, the shell, the glass screen lens, the battery, the 3D printed bracket, and the charging PCB, that cost altogether about $107. And to add in the IPS display, that's gonna be another $50. So you're looking at a total cost of about $160 for this kit, not including uh, the price of the Game Boy Color. So now I wanna show you some comparison footage of the Funny Playing IPS display alongside the Freckle Shack uh, TFT LCD backlight kit for the Game Boy Color. And, and what I really wanna show is just the difference in the size of the screen. Now it may not seem like such a huge difference, but really when you play it, you do really notice the extra screen real estate. So not only is the IPS display the same size as the original Game Boy Color, but it also has, I feel like, much more vibrant colors. It can certainly get much brighter than the TFT display. And this particular kit has six levels of brightness. So there you have it, guys. In my opinion, this is the ultimate Game Boy Color build and just an amazing way to experience the Game Boy Color. I do hope you did enjoy the video. If you did, consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. I release videos every Thursday. And as always, we'll see you next time.